Welcome back friends, uh, in this video we will be talking about the carbohydrate metabolism and among carbohydrate metabolism we will be talking about the pyruvate oxidation. Now uh, three major sources of pyruvate are glycolysis, uh, transamination of alanine and the reoxidation of lactate. These are the three important steps of getting this pyruvate. Its major uses by the cell including being a substrate for gluconeogenesis and we know that we can convert this pyruvate and produce, uh, convert this pyruvate to glucose which is uh, the most important form of sugar inside our body. Serving, uh, this pyruvate also serves as uh, the precursor for oxaloacetate and acetyl CoA production which to allow operation of the citric acid cycle and it can also act as a receptor for excess NADH electron in the cytosol of anaerobically metabolizing cells. So these are the very Im much importance about uh, these pyruvates. Now under anaerobic conditions pyruvate must convert to lactate uh, to regenerate the NAD plus which is really important because all of the uh, important steps of many many in fact many important steps uh, of glycolysis uh, will finally burn out all the NAD pluses and uh, finally will lead up to the production of NAD H plus. So uh, we lack NAD plus. We need to shift the NAD uh, shift this NAD plus back onto the action, which is uh, then can be reused as a substrate in glycolysis, and that can be done utilizing this uh, fermentation of uh, pyruvate into lactose lactate, right? This is especially important in cells that are uh, rarely exclusively on glycolysis of energy that, that totally rely on the uh, glycolysis for the energy like red blood cells which cannot uh, carry on the Krebs cycle because Krebs cycle need a lot of uh, complex machinery, a lot of enzymes to do but those cells are destined to deliver the oxygen not all the other things so they will only depend on uh, this glycolysis and in those cells this step is really really important. Now lactate is uh, cir circulated through the blood to the liver which is uh, used in glycolysis okay now uh, here is an uh, prolonged anaerobic condition will lead to the la lactic acidosis which is an uh, disease lactic acidosis is a dangerous disease but this part of the conversion from pyruvate to lactic acid or lactate is conducted by the enzyme called lactate dehydrogenase now the lactate dehydrogenase converts this pyruvate into lactate uh, this is a, this is the rearrangement here and uh, there is uh, the conversion of NADH into NAD plus this is really really important because uh, as as this happens we can finally uh, make NAD pluses and uh, re, uh, we can reincorporate NAD pluses inside the cytosol okay which are consumed in previous times now in mitochondria pyruvate can be converted to oxaloacetate we can also know that via the citric acid cycle intermediate and substrate of gluconeogenesis now this part of conversion of this pyruvate into oxaloacetate which is then further used in, as, uh, in, in citric acid cycle is carried out by the enzyme called pyruvate carboxylase and as the name suggests it will, uh, it, it will leave uh, it will attach the carbon carbonic acid or, or HCO3 minus group onto this pyruvate it will generate another uh, extra carbon to this pyruvate and it will produce four carbon molecule okay and this four carbon molecule is called the oxaloacetate for but for this reaction they must need ATP uh, energy and the energy is coming at the form of ATP and also the enzyme it mm, is involved is called the pyruvate carboxylase it is depending up upon a uh, coenzyme in this case and this cofactors are in this case are biotin and as well as acetyl CoA so this acetyl CoA and bi biotin is acting on it now acetyl CoA activates pyruvate carboxylase therefore high levels of acetyl CoA increase gluconeogenesis that we can uh, definitely say that high level of acetyl CoA can block this high level of acetyl CoA can help uh, to, to convert this into oxaloacetate and as we are producing oxaloacetate uh, oxaloacetate is a very important intermediate of gluconeogenesis so we can shift back towards the gluconeogenesis so all of the metabolic processes are linked with each other now let us see what is the role of biotin now biotin is a coenzyme that is covalently attached to the amino, amino group of a lysine of the apoenzyme okay now biotin is used by the apoenzyme to carboxylate the target molecule after forming a high energy intermediate from CO2 and the cleavage of the ATP so it will utilizes the energy from uh, the breaking down of ATP and as a high energy intermediate can form due to the uh, carrying of the carbon dioxide and uh, right after the bringing uh, uh, so so biotin is needed for holding uh, this this uh, carbon dioxide or hco3 minus structure together 
okay so that's why it's really important now biotin is used frequently as a cofactor in carboxylation reaction so remember this in mind keep this thing in your mind that if you are thinking about different carboxylation reaction most of the time it the, the enzymes of carboxylation reactions carry these biotins because biotin is sweet this is perfectly suited for this for this role okay like here you can see in this case okay added and uh, then finally oxaloacetate is formed that's how it's done now let us move on uh, to the third kind and this is uh, the last one it is called the oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate to acetyl CoA this is the most genuine process not genuine most uh, common process of all uh, then conversion of pyruvate into acetyl CoA but this is a really really tough and difficult process right now this enzyme complex which is needed for the conversion of pyruvate into acetyl CoA is called the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex or PDH complex that can be inactivated by phosphorylation of the enzyme. Now the enzyme is activated by higher levels of acetyl CoA and also NADH. The enzyme's kinase and phosphor phosphatase are allosterically affected by this as well. So this enzyme of phosphor pyruvate dehydrogenase complex uh, or, or the enzyme complex is uh, can be can be controlled or can be regulated in both ways uh, in uh, with the help of uh, allosteric regulation as well as with the help of the covalent modification. Now we can see here we are having this pyruvate. Now we can utilize this coenzyme A. Uh, so coenzyme A is attached uh, and NAD is converted into NADH and carbon dioxide is released because it is called the oxidative decarboxylation. Remember, so carbon dioxide must release and finally it will produce acetyl CoA. So the enzyme is called the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. It is actually made up with three small enzymes, three different enzymes actually, which is just uh, allowing or uh, sitting uh, one with another, sitting one right after another, and they are they are just complementary. Uh, their their job are complementary with each other, so they are doing their jobs all the time. This oxidation process, remember, is irreversible. This explains why gluconeogenesis can't use acetyl CoA as a substrate because if it can utilizes this acetyl CoA as substrate, then gluconeogenesis can be uh, taken place from uh, the acetyl CoA towards the glucose. But that cannot happen because the process of conversion of pyruvate into acetyl CoA is unidirectional. It is not multidirectional. This is. Uh, only uh, the, 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 the irreversible pro this is this is another un irreversible process of this place okay now if we look at the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex it is uh, made up with three enzymes now the pyruvate is a alpha keto acid as we all know the pyruvate oxidation server serves as an um, example of the way in which all the alpha keto acids are oxidatively decarboxylated now there are three distinct subunits as you can see here e1 e2 and e3 e1 is called the pyruvate decarboxylase enzyme E2 is called the dihydrolipoyl transacetylase enzyme. The third one is called dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase enzyme. Okay, now E3 enzyme is the same in all alpha uh, keto and dehydrogenase complexes, but uh, the E1 and E2 are varying from time to time or from one type of uh, dehydrogenase complex to another type of dehydrogenase complex. Okay, now if you zoom into the uh, structure, what we can find here the pyruvate decarboxylase, the first subunit adds pyruvate to the terminal group. Uh, so we are having TPP here, which is the thiamine pyrophosphate. So thiamine pyrophosphate is there, and uh, to the thiamine pyrophosphate, it facilitates the decarboxylation. The thiamine attacks ketone and modifies the adjacent bonds. So as a result of this ketone ad attraction, uh, attack and modification of the uh, adjacent bond, the carbon dioxide is released. So the first product is formed during this reaction between E1 and the carbon dioxide is released and the rest of the chain is attached to this thymine pyrophosphate. Now the second step, uh, acetylated carb carboanion generated during decarboxylation attacks, disulfide of the oxidating lipoic acid forming a thioester with one of the resulting sulfide. So it is making a thioester bond. So this is the lipoic acid. Now the, when the lipoic acid is free, when the lipoic acid is reduced, uh, the reduced form of lipoic acid is having SH, SH in both of the hands. But when it is oxidized, both of the sulfur are linked with each other to make a disulfide linkage. So in this case, it is free of uh, the oxidative state so it is a reduced state of the lipoic acid so one of the sulfate can bind with this uh, this carbon of, of this keto acid right so it will bind with that this this is uh, the step when oxidation of the pyruvate carbon occurs now the pyruvate carbon is oxidized at, at, at the addition of sulfur 
to it. Okay. Now right after that the E2 then transfers the acetyl group to the CoA to make the acetyl CoA. So acetyl CoA is made on the second reaction. So why we all need this third uh, set of enzyme and third set of reaction? Because we have already produced acetyl CoA right after the second enzymatic step. But we need the third enzymatic step to, to uh, to maintain uh, whatever we have we are utilized so in this case the picture is uh, slightly wrong because right after this kind of step what they end up with they end up with the production of uh, of the oxidization of the sulfur sulfur hands so in those case we need to uh, give uh, give this uh, this 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 enzyme complex shift it uh, back towards its original conformation because during these processes the conformation of this enzyme is getting distorted and 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 the active sites are getting blocked now we need to release those active sites for the further chemical reactions that's why we need to carry the third set of reaction in this case okay so in this case what we are having the acetyl CoA is left in an inactive reduced lipoic acid residue so lipoic acid whatever we are having here is reduced residue or both of the hands are having SH in this case we have started with the oxidative state of uh, this lipoic acid now we are looking at the reduced state and reduced state can only be possible right after the production of acetyl CoA remember this thing now E3 generates active E2 by transferring electrons from the reduced lipoic acid to a bound flavine and then to NAD to make NAD right so in this case as you can see that this uh, reduced form of lipoic acid in then converted into the oxidized form of lipoic acid and the form of oxi uh, oxidized form of lipoic acid means the attachment of two sulfates with the help of a sulfur sulf diester bond right the sulfate are attached to itself and 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 FAD is uh, released and this releasing of FAD can be established by transferring the H into the NAD and NAD is uh, reduced to NADH plus and as a result of the NADH reduction NAD plus reduction uh, the, the lipoyl acid is or lipoic acid is oxidized again and we need this oxidized state of lipoic acid for further carrying the reaction steps so right this three this third enzyme is really important to restore back the conformation of enzyme to restore back the enzymatic active site at its previous form for making the functionality going in the future generations okay that's important now uh, arsenide compo components so from a covalent bond with this reduced lipoic acid group uh, on the E2 so that's why the arsenic can act as a really really poisonous substrate for that so arsenic can come and attach to this substrate and it, uh, wh what it does it attach to this uh, reduced form of the lipoic acid and this ties up the enzyme and prevents its use as a result uh, the complex is so much strong that other enzyme components cannot leave this arsenide component out from this sulfur hand and as a result these two sulfur hands can never be joined with each other and can never be oxidized so as a result of the blocking of the oxidation of this lipoic acid the E2 complex is, is uh, malfunctioning and E2 complex function is stopped as a result the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex formation uh, complex function is blocked so here what we have seen see so if we are having acetyl CoA or NADH or ATP pr produced here it will uh, it will make the kinase favored because kinase's activity is to, uh, is to attach the phosphate group to this pyruvate dehydrogenase complex so a, as a result of the attachment of the phosphate group to this enzyme the enzyme becomes activated much more activated but what happens uh, whenever the phosphate group is cleaved or phosphatase uh, uh, enzyme can come and cleave this phosphate group the activity of the enzyme reduces right uh, so whatever I've said no 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 I, I've just say the wrong thing phosphorylation of this E1 enzyme inactivates the enzyme sorry I, I completely forget about this so the phosphorylation of E1 enzyme inactivates this enzyme so you can see here the phosphorylation takes place in this enzyme and it is be become inactive so let me play it again so it is inactivated and uh, and, and and whenever phosph phosphatase enzyme come and cleave this phosphate out from this E1 site again this enzyme become activated now the activator of the enzyme ER pyruvate ADP and insulin so th if, if pyruvate is present there then definitely they, they want to take the pyruvate and break it down into acetyl CoA so in those situations uh, dephosphorylation even takes place and the enzyme becomes activated but in normal situations this E1 residue is phosphorylated most of the time and thus the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex o is inactivated most of the time so this is about uh, this third step of conversion of pyruvate into acetyl CoA 
Now let us move on. The pyruvate freely diffuses across the mitochondrial membrane. It may be converted to acetyl CoA and can be processed by the citric acid cycle, or it may not be converted to oxal. Uh, it may be converted to the oxaloacetate and feed gly gluconeogenesis or replenish the citric acid cycle intermediates. So we can see there are a lot of different ways. One of the ways is to produce lactic acid. This, uh, this is an anaerobic condition. One of the uh, ways to produce oxaloacetate, which is a four-carbon compound. Comp component which can give rise to the glucose again through the gluconeogenesis process and it can also um, uh, go through the downstream processes for citric acid cycle right so this is all about uh, how uh, uh, this pyruvate is oxidized and i hope it will help you thank you